big mushrooms that toadstool mushrooms that look like something off a fairy tale so magical and I've never seen this before Rusty red on her shoulder I was cleaning her shoe So welcome to another landscape photography video So during this video we're going to be trying macro photography as a complete beginner so this is very much going to be learning on the job and I think that's probably where the most growth happens is when you just go out and give it a try yourself and just see what you can create. So let's start off with our first composition. We have these three tiny little mushrooms and I want to capture this with some photography rules at play. So you've got the rule of thirds, you want to centre the mushrooms to the left and you've got that lovely green mossy space to the right. Now, I'm going to try and take a picture now and see how it turns out and then just talk you through any challenges that I might have. So let's frame up, take some shots and see what hurdles we come across and how we overcome them as an amateur. the softer images, the ones where you don't have everything in focus. I like the ethereal, the softness that comes across in the image. But I do want things to be in focus, kinda. So I'm looking at in-camera focus bracketing and then also I'm now going to take multiple focus stacked images using a tripod. So this is handheld, image stabilisation on, being careful with your breath, you know, holding it at times when you're taking the image just to keep everything stable. Now let's move to the tripod and stack the image. So I have a couple of tripods with me. I've got my Manfrotto tripod here and I've got a travel Benro tripod. I have realised I'm struggling to get my tripod low enough and I have seen this before with other photographers but I didn't quite understand it or how it works. So now I get it. <laughs> you just can't get very low um, so you're going to have to go upside down. So I'm going to try and figure out how to do that with the tripods I got. But I've also taken off my camera strap because it's in the way. It's um, very clunky and it can also affect your images because if you're doing focus stacks and this catches in the wind or you catch it, then it can just ruin a set of images. So this is going in the bag and then I'm going to set up the tripod and show you how that looks. Okay, so this is a very fun way of shooting. My camera is upside down, which feels very strange. My subject is here. So as you can see you've got the three on the left, this nice blade of grass and this open space which kind of draws your eye in here and then you look across and look at the wider scene. I don't know if I do want the blade of grass there but it's part of nature so I'm going to leave it and just see how the image turns out. So I'm going to manually focus by just turning the ring here, avoiding the stinging nails. So just manually focusing and looking at my scene which is just here to try and get multiple images of this gorgeous set of mushrooms. So you've got the rule of thirds here and then you've got the three mushrooms. This is distracting but it's also part of the scene and maybe that tells a story too. So I'm going to pop this image on the screen, let me know what you guys think of this. And there's a lot of mushrooms growing on them so I'm going to take a bit of time now this is the time to slow down I've taken my first image and now I can consciously think about the compositions that are within these logs oak trees are good for fungi they um, I don't know they seem to hold the water really well and there's a lot of stuff going on with these logs there's a lot of mushrooms there's a lot of busyness so Isolating subjects is really good, just look at your basic photography rules such as the rule of thirds, placement of the um, mushrooms within the frame and also what else is going on around it, how else can you tell a story with your imagery. So let's have a little hunt around these logs. I've got this corridor so I'm like on this little walkway and then you have this set of logs which is all in the middle. So I'm being really careful as you can see I've got my line of tripods and my bag which are all within the little corridor. 
be super careful when you're doing macro photography not to disturb the scene too much because uh, we will leave a trace and even planting your tripod legs into the ground it has an earth the ground slightly so just be super careful when you are working with nature to be respectful of it as well so let me have a little look around see what I can create for you and uh, I'll turn you guys back on when I find my next magical mushroom scene cable release cable release would be useful <laughs> This is why it's good to just show you as I'm doing this that there are things that you need. A cable release would be a good idea. Especially when you're working upside down, this is very useful. Or I'm finding it is essential. <laughs> so, let's move my scene slightly, pop this in, and then we've got a way to take the photo without figuring how to turn it on <laughs> upside down. We'll take the photo upside down. There we go. I find mushrooms is just a bit quite busy, a bit like woodland photography, it's quite chaotic. Yeah. So trying to find something within all of this um, to isolate things I think is uh, quite a fun challenge actually. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you'll find with macro is, have you got a flash gun? I do have a flash gun with me, yes. A flash gun in? Yeah, I might try that. I thought it was quite bright when I used it before. But... And knock it down to between half and a third power. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so that all you get then is it just makes the mushroom stand out. Yeah, I'll picture, try that. You know. A third. Okay, I'll try that. I've got it in my bag, so yeah. I'll give that a go. Not only do direct flash, do bounce flash as well. Yeah, so I have tried that actually, having it off the side. Yeah. Yeah, I have actually tried that once before, but not with macro. So um, yeah, I'll try it off the side and see how that yeah. how that works. And uh, it doesn't make it so stark. Yeah. It gives you a bit. Uh, bright, but yeah. uh, not so stark, you know. Yeah, okay, very useful tips. Yeah, I'll give that a go now. Okay, best well, of luck. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see you later. Right. Bye. Some good tips there from um, this gentleman who is uh, bird watching. So, the guy said it, he knows. Let's get the flash out. I do have a flash with me actually. There's our friend there waiting for his bird. Okay, so we're set up here and we've got our cable release as discovered is very essential and then shot wise it's probably quite difficult to see but you have this mushroom here which my subject is actually just there so you've got this really interesting fungi which is all going along the inside of this log and then you have these pinky style mushrooms which i find really stunning yeah Lo lovely collection here. So let me just show you what happens when I side like these mushrooms. So you just have a, just a little bit more depth that comes through. So you can see those stalks underneath are being illuminated. So without, it's quite basic and then with just adds a bit of depth. My recent interest in fungi was born from a book. Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake has captivated my mind and sparked a creative fire within me. It feels as though I've been walking blind, missing a beautiful season of mushrooms each year happening right under my nose. Fungi are essential in life. Without them, we wouldn't exist. The trees wouldn't be amongst us nor would the wildlife feeding at their feet. From medicine to changing the weather, fungi are influencing our world, creating life and consuming it. 90% of the world's fungi are undiscovered and yet to be described by people. There is a mysterious world waiting to be unearthed. The interconnected world of fungi is vast and complex. Like the intricate web of the internet, to the vast motorway systems we use every day. Nature's network is at play in all aspects of life. Just like the reach of this YouTube video and the person you might share it with, 
like a mycorrhizal network, we all play out the role of fungi in our everyday lives. If you would like to learn more about this, join our book club on Focus Flow by Susanna Mary. So I was just walking down here through this woodland, which is very, very beautiful. And I noticed to my left, these, it's like something out of a magical fairy tale. And luckily I've got my tripod set up already, which is quite handy. And sadly that one's already been broken, but there's still some good ones. <laughs> wow, big mushrooms, that toadstool mushrooms that look like something off a fairy tale, so magical. And I've never seen this before. I've never seen this in person. I mean, yeah, this is incredible, incredible. <sighs> wow. This was a surprise. This is a mushroom walk, but I wasn't expecting to see these. Very exciting, very, very excited. Let's get the camera ready, framed up, and hopefully I can do them justice. I'm really loving this bokeh effect here. You can just about see the stalk, and I'm focus stacking. It's a lovely scene, very cute. And this little mushroom is hard to see, actually. You really have to go in quite close to be able to see your subject. So that's this one done. Now I need to try and frame up these ones, which definitely won't need a macro lens. I do have my wide angle with me, but we'll see what we can create. I like the textures on the top and potentially going down low and looking upwards is always a good option, but the color is on the top. So trying to navigate that is gonna be a challenge. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed It was a mutual arrangement we both saw in two But can she walk in the fire? Can she run in the rain? Can she make it up the mountain? One thing you can do with your images is look at the rules within photography so you have the rule of thirds you have l where you place your subject but I'd also look at introducing other things in the scene so you can build on the narrative and I really like how the nettle leaves in this image create a really nice soft bokeh effect very painterly very nostalgic of this kind of mushroom scene so I'm going to pop that image on the screen now. But can she walk in the fire? Can she run in the rain? Can she make it up the mountainside? Can so yeah, let me know what you guys think of that. I'm going to stay around this area, take some more shots of the fungi because there are so many. And I'm going to put those images on the screen. It'll be a mixture of handheld and some focus stacking. But I think I've gone through enough of some basic tips and learning in the field to help you guys start this type of photography and then my next video next week is going to be elevating that you know taking this to the next level becoming a little bit more familiar with the lens and maybe trying some other types of photography and finding your own voice with this type of work because the still images of mushrooms are there for the taking they're not going anywhere so it gives you time just to play with um, different effects such as obviously introducing nettle leaves which create this very painterly feel. And finally I'm just going to mention my photography platform which is a mindful photography platform. It is a book club, access to a whatsapp group, sleep stories, a mushroom sleep story I'm working on and it's all free access if you'd like to join us or you can donate via patreon. Uh, there'll be a link on the website. But yes, I'm going to put some images on the screen now of these gorgeous mushrooms. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I'll see you on my next video. Take care. Can she make it up the mountainside? Can she make it down again? I have often wondered if she'll go and jump the fence. Will she keep on moving onward or staying?